Was this a former or current employee of the DA's yeah. office? Okay. And her return has been filed. I know that she did not want to come without her lawyer here, but I know they instructed them maybe. All right, well, Ms. Merchant, do you have any other witnesses available? Well, we have Mr. Bradley. Um, we have him testify, um, but again, we're probably going to have a lot of objections with um, privilege, and so I'd much rather call him here first, but I know that Mr. Partridge, we're wrinkling that this morning by having a conflict. With him. Sure. So. But I can. I, what I could do is I could call Mr. Bradley and then I can bring him back. Exactly. I think you can always you can always recall him. We can ping pong back and forth if we need to based on uh, hearsay issues. But at least we can use this time until Mr. Partridge chooses to join us. Is he on the Zoom? Or not, Mr. Partridge or Ms. Or, um, Ms. Yuri on Zoom? No, not that we're aware of. No. Okay. Just wanted to check because I don't. All right. So I suppose you call your next witness then. Thank you. Thank you. Is someone getting Mr. Bradley in? Yes, I believe so. Oh, the sheriff's in the Okay. Sorry. Normally, I'm sorry. Are the sheriff's in the When I call a witness, will the sheriff's not sound for them? Uh, I don't know if they're going to know where they are. Okay. okay. So I think it'd be best if maybe someone from your team. Okay. And they're not going to know what they look like either. Not a problem. Sure. Mm -hmm. He's outside.
Terrence Bradley, T E R R E N C E Bradley, B R A D L E Y. Your Honor, as Mr. Wade's counsel, before we start, we would request to talk about attorney client records before we get on the stand. Why does that need to be in camera? Um, it doesn't necessarily, well, there's statements that could be made that could be prejudicial depending on whether they were covered or not, whether it's in the break. So at the time a question is asked that you think implicates some of those statements, object and we'll handle it. Thank you, Judge. Just on behalf of Mr. Bradley, and I apologize, this is not our proceeding, but it might be helpful to have a brief sidebar as opposed to something in chambers, at least so that we could let the court know our position <coughs> rather than having to restate it repeatedly. And Judge, I've carefully crafted my questions to avoid any privileged information, um, but if they think that I'm invading that, then I welcome an objection, and I'm happy to address it. Let's see how it goes. And again, Mr. Bradley, I'll ask if you can just give a pause in between each question to allow counsel the opportunity to object before answering. Thank you, Judge. Did, was the witness sworn, or do I need to persuade the witness? I believe he okay. was. Great. Thank you. I'm sorry. Good morning, Mr. Bradley. How are you? Good morning. Um, not happy to be here, I'm assuming. I am not. I understand. Thank you for being here. Um, Wasn't my choice. <laughs> right. Um, so you were subpoenaed to come and testify in this case. I was. Okay. And But you and I have spoken previously about um, relevant facts surrounding um, Mr. Wade and Mr. Wilson's relationship. No, we have not. We have not. We have not texted about those facts? Through a third party, um, you were giving some information. You and I shared text. Our text were more so about my health, um, more so about um, if I was okay with what was going on, um, that I would not be, um, whether or not I was going to be subpoenaed or not, and that um, emphatically I would not have been sitting in this position as being called as a witness. So that's what my text chain show. Um, so no. That we've never talked about um, Willis and Wade having a relationship. Not directly you and I, no. We talked about my health. Okay. We talked about, um, as I stated before, um, other things, but not this, no. Okay. Um, did you text me about um, Wade and Willis taking many trips together? I'm not, I'm gonna I object. Well, Mr. Graham, so. there's been an objection. One, I'm going to object as it relates to attorney client privilege. Two, I'm going to object because I haven't seen the text messages that she's attempting to impeach uh, the witness with. Uh, and two, he's made all of his representations is that he's had zero communication as it relates to the issues that um, Ms. Merchant continues to uh, ask about and that the only information that she has from him is the third party, which would be hearsay. Ms. Merchant. Um, judge, it's not hearsay. Um, we've had these conversations. If I need to take the stand, I will. Um, if I need to put my phone into evidence, I will. So the first objection was to uh, privilege on behalf of the state. Oh, I'm sorry. I did not respond to sure. that. Thank you, Judge. Um, privilege is only communications that are made in furtherance of legal advice. There's been no showing that whether or not they took a trip to California or took a trip or that Mr. Bradley and I talked about that, um, either in person or by text, that that's privilege. That's not, I'm not asking for any communications that Mr. Wade might have made to Mr. Bradley in furtherance of any legal advice. All right. And Mr. Abadi, uh, I believe as the one asserting privilege, it would be your burden to show the necessary foundation there. Is that something you want to avoid here, the witness on or take up here on this specific question? Well, no, I'd also object to foundation ground. She has not um, provided any foundation that he would have, have any knowledge of what she's um, requesting the answer. His answer where he had no knowledge. And now she's, she hasn't laid the foundation in order to continue to ask the same question over and over again. Ms. Merchant. Just on behalf of Mr. Bradley, we do object. This falls under the privileges of 401.6 of the rules, and the attorney-client privilege is not something that Mr. Bradley can waive. Only Mr. Wade can waive it, regardless of any information or communications being proffered by the client 
Mr. Wade would have to wait in, in order for Mr. Bradley to continue to testify about any of this relationship until it's been established when that privilege should have begun. Sure. And so far, though, I haven't heard anything about a relationship, about an attorney-client relationship, about a privilege ever attaching. And I think that's going to need to be established before we can actually determine the scope of it and whether this falls inside or out of it. So I think either Ms. Merchant can take the lead if she wants to, but uh, my understanding was that generally has to fall on the person who's asserting the privilege. Except for the attorney is not authorized to violate that privilege or else he has, in fact, violated the bar rules. We do have an opinion regarding uh, from someone in the state bar of Georgia. All right. And that's why I thought perhaps the sidebar might be important rather than my interjecting. Well, I still want to kind of see how we can go. So, Ms. Merchant, uh, it sounds like you're going to need to Lay a, bit, lay a little bit more foundation to see whether this actually is uh, is going to fall under privilege or not. That's, that's not a problem, Judge. And, and what I can do, um, I was just told that Ms. Yerdy's in the waiting room, um, but I can, um, if the state wants to read my text, if Mr. Bradley wants to read them to refresh his memory, I have absolutely no problem with that. Um, I have my phone here, and they're welcome to do that. But I'll, I'll talk about some other things, and then maybe um, if they're going to have a lot of objections to privilege and hearsay, what I can do is I can lay a foundation with Mr. Bradley, get him off the stand, put Ms. Yerdy up, um, and then Mr. Wade, so we can get through the privilege issues. That might make the most sense. Thank you. Um, all right, let's talk about something not controversial then. When did you and Mr. Wade first meet? Um, probably 1998. Okay. And um, did you all have a firm, a law firm together? We did. Okay. When did that firm start? Um, probably, I think it was 2010 we started. Um, exclusively working together as a firm, operating as a firm. Okay. And were you all actually incorporated as a firm? Uh, not initially, no. Uh, he had, um, I, when I um, passed the bar and I hung with Shingle in 07, um, I think he had been practicing um, a few years prior to that. He had his own firm. We had two separate firms. Okay. At some point, did you all incorporate, though, together? We did. Okay. Do you remember about when that was? Um, I do not at this particular moment, no, ma'am. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, do you remember if it was administratively dissolved? I've been made aware that it's been administratively dissolved. Yes, I left the firm uh, around two years ago. When did you leave the firm? Um, August of 2022, I think it was. August of 2022. Okay. Well, it was either August or September of 2022. Okay, August, September, let me make a note. So at, um, in October 2019, were you all incorporated as a firm? I think we were, maybe. Okay. Yes. And when Mr. Wade filed for divorce November 1st or 2nd, um, 2021, were you all incorporated as a firm? We should have been. I, I'm thinking that we, we were. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, when did Mr. Wade come to you to file the divorce action in Cobb County. That's, that's privileged information. The, 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 the timing and the beginning of the privilege, I don't believe that is uh, overall. So the timing was around 2018. Okay. Um, and it was probably December of tw um, 2018. I remember it specifically because I was building a house um, and I noticed that he wasn't wearing his ring. I asked him about it. I had invited him to the house because I was having a, not a housewarming, but people over. Uh, and he wasn't wearing his ring. I inquired about it. From there, we discussed um, what would happen. Um, and we discussed the divorce and what would happen. What would happen with the divorce? What would happen over over to me representing him for the divorce and when when he would want to do it, yes. When did he retain you? Well, um, my memory would be 2018 okay. when he um, <coughs> consulted with me about the divorce and told me what he would like to see done and when he wanted to do it. Okay. Um, do you know when Fonnie Willis and Nathan Wade met? 
specific dates, no. Um, I know it was sometime at a conference. Um, Municipal court conference? Correct. Okay. Um, and um, October 2019, um, if, if it's been represented in, in the state's pleadings before, that that's when they met, does that sound familiar? If that's, if that's what they're saying, then absolutely. I know it was at a conference in 2000. I mean, it was at a conference. I don't, to the, if you say it's 2019, I'll take you at your word. Okay. So it was at a, you, what you're sure of, though, is it was at a municipal courts judges conference. Yes. When they were both municipal court judges. Yes. So it's fair to say, since she became district attorney, she was no longer a municipal court judge. So it had to have been before that. That they met? Yes. Yes. And um, he was teaching a class at that seminar, as far as you know. I'm going to object to deleting this point. I'm direct. Was he teaching a class at this seminar? To my knowledge, he was. And was Ms. Willis, to your knowledge, attending this seminar? Your Honor, I'm going to object to his own personal knowledge. He wasn't present at the, at, at the municipal court's training. But they put it in their pleadings. Like, uh, we are going to be here all day. Um, <laughs> we are going to be here all day. All right. Uh, if you can establish that he would have some personal knowledge, then, then that's a fair question. So if you just need to preface it with that, then that's fine. Thank you. Um, are you aware of when their uh, romantic relationship began? Your Honor, I'm going to object. That relates to privilege. She says that he began re representing uh, Mr. Wade in 2018. He met Ms. Willis in 2019. That's clearly within the bounds of attorney-client privilege. Look, there's a, I a, understood Mr. Body, so I think Ms. Merchant, you need to qualify that. Uh, question. Um, thank you. I'm not asking you to tell me what Nathan Wade told you in furtherance of legal advice. Okay, so I want to be very clear. If he told you something, asking you legal advice, I'm not asking you about that. I'm asking about what you observed, what you saw, and what you knew outside of what he told you when he was specifically seeking legal advice. Okay. If this is too far afield. I apologize. I object again on behalf of Mr. Bradley. He's asserting that there is an attorney client privilege associated with this case under Rule 1.6 for him to draw any inference, make any statements, or any other proffer of information after this relationship began between attorney and client in December of 2018 would be improper and he would, in fact, be violating the rules of ethics associated with his bar license. So the way the question was phrased was just saying, what did he personally observe outside of the relationship not involving communications? How does that fall within attorney-client privilege? Your Honor, whether we like it or not, when we have a client, there are a number of items associated with that relationship between attorney and client that come within your purview and that lead you to further action, lead you to further investigation, further questions, develop your strategy. We can't talk about Mr. Wade on any level. It would be inappropriate. The divorce was filed sometime thereafter. During that entire interlude, any of these issues could, in fact, have been the basis for their relationship to remain privileged. Ms. Merchant. Judge, his observations are not privileged. That's not what the privilege law says. And I can I can read you the attorney privilege, attorney client privilege attaches where? And this is the law, this is the rule. There's an attorney client relationship. The communications in question relate to the matters on which legal advice was sought. And the communications have been maintained in confidence, and there's no exceptions to the privilege. First, or number two, the second prong. This was not in furtherance of legal advice. That's not in furtherance of legal advice. What he witnesses as a human being is not in furtherance of, of legal advice. Unless, I mean, and, and if he witnesses them together, it would get rid of the attorney-client privilege because Ms. Willis is there. Um, additionally, though, exceptions. We can go all day about exceptions to this. Fraud to the court, that's an exception. Mr. Wade, we contend, has filed a false affidavit with this court. That is fraud to the court. If this witness has direct knowledge that that is not true, then that's an exception to attorney-client privilege. All right. Um, Ms. Merchant, if you could re-ask that question, again, qualifying it as, if it's, I think you qualified it as anything that, outside of anything he learned or was told as a result of his representation, it was just any observations he made, which in my mind, as you phrased the question, would have included before December 2018 when this first consultation occurred. Uh, I think if you can go step by step, 
uh, we can handle this. And, and Judge, I would just ask permission. Um, we gave the state notice under 611 that all of these witnesses do not want to be here. They are adverse witnesses. I understand. Yes, that, so I'd like to have Lee Wayne to be able to cross them. Thank you, Judge. Um, all right, Mr. Rapp. Yes, ma'am. In, um, you acknowledge that their relationship began in 2019. I do not have knowledge, but again, I have consulted uh, with the bar um, as late as yesterday at four o'clock. Um, I am not here to. Your testimony is that you do not have independent knowledge. I, I cannot. I was advised by the bar that rule 1.6 of confidentiality applies and that I cannot reveal anything that I saw or learned. And that if the court is asking me to do that, that an immediate certificate of review should be asked. And so I'm not here to um, misrepresent to the court or to say anything inappropriate or, or anything. I am here because I also have a law license. And I'm not trying to lose that. And so, Mr. Bradley, can you finish that thought? I saw or learned... Just period, without qualification whatsoever? Judge, I'm going to refer to what I was told by the bar, that Rule 1.6 of confidentiality applies, and that I would be asking for an immediate review by the Supreme Court. Sure, but applies to what? Any communications is what the person at the bar told us. Any communications? He, like he, it, did, he did not qualify. to Mr. Wade, that's covered. Well, Judge, I, I don't know. Um, he didn't go into those specifics, um, but this is what was told. I was sitting there uh, with my attorneys, and this was what was told to us, rule, to state that Rule 1.6 applies. Um, and we gave them the scenario, and this is what they told us to do. And this is what I'm doing at this particular point. Judge, and we have no knowledge if the bar was aware of the affidavit that Mr. Wade filed, um, but that significantly changes the privilege. Um, he waived the privilege when he put that in the affidavit, so that's one of the reasons I wanted to call him. That's a waiver. He put the relationship in the, in the um, when the relationship started and put the relationship in his affidavit. He put a lot of information in that affidavit that would waive certain amounts of privilege. So he disclosed this relationship. So basically what we've got is we've got Mr. Wade being able to say what he wants about this relationship, but then we're not allowed to ask questions to qualify that. Um, so that's that's not how it works. They either get to, to admit it or they don't. It's either privileged or it's not. We're just talking about a relationship, though. How does that open the floodgates to anything he's ever told an attorney during representation? It doesn't, and I'm not asking him that. I'm asking for his knowledge. They were law partners, and as, as I go through the questions, I think he has knowledge of things that is not something that Mr. Wade specifically told him. I also think there's a fraud exception to a lot of this, even if there was a privilege, but I don't think there was for most of it. Your Honor, but he's already sure. represented that he has no knowledge about that. I don't think we've actually gotten anything to that extent yet. Uh, I think we're still <laughs> making our way through it, which is uh, I think he's taking the position that he's not willing to share anything Mr. Wade ever told him, period which that's a, a broader representation of attorney-client privilege than I've ever heard. And uh, I think that's what we're trying to parse out, is if, there's a, if the relationship starts, I've never heard anything that said everything before that point is privileged. Before Do you have something that, that I should know? No, yes, sir. Apologies, Judge. That's fine. Before that relationship, these questions aren't being established. It was 2018, December. The last question was directly related to a point in time after that during which the relationship attorney and client would have been already established. He has a, an opinion from the State Bar of Georgia that he's going to be required to testify when he's ordered by the court on any of these issues. And Judge, I understand how delicate this is. You can phrase it in a thousand different ways to try to make him say something, but you can't unring a bell that he puts out into the universe where he has violated that privilege. Was well, you going to get to go back six months from now and say, oh, well, we shouldn't have said that. It, it's not acceptable. It violates hundreds of thousands of relationships in this state that we rely on in order for the justice system to function. This is an attorney-client privilege issue. 
We've done all the diligence we can as far as looking up the relevant laws, the relevant information. We do not have a waiver from the client. The, the client is present. What else? There's, there's no question I, I, why we're not barreling ahead is because I recognize the privilege. What, uh, what we have to determine is actually what that privilege, the scope of it, and when it started. And I don't think we've even gotten close to that yet. I apologize, Judge. I thought December 2018, Mr. Bradley testified directly that that is when the retainer and the divorce proceedings were beginning. The issues being brought up by the state have to be potentially, if I've been. So we have, we have a starting point. Uh, but does that necessarily uh, foreclose anything from that point onward? If well, they started talking about something else entirely? Post divorce, of course not, Your Honor. But during the pendency, it would absolutely curtail that, especially as it has to do with observations, attendance at um, functions together, or other realizations that Mr. Bradley came into during the pendency of his representation. And of course, it to parse it out would put Mr. Bradley in an untenable position because his reputation means everything. Okay, Mr. Say now. Your Honor, I think we're talking about two aspects of <coughs> arguably the attorney client privilege. There's the attorney client privilege, which is controlled by case law and statute, which deals with communications and purposes. I don't hear that being the objection. The objection is that there are confidential matters under 1.6, which in some form or fashion mean that once you start a relationship with attorney client, that everything from that point on is confidential between the two. There is no such case law in Georgia that deals with confidential information at that time. Attorney client, yes, confidential information, no. And I believe what's being argued by counsel, Mr. Bradley, is that he has received, of course, we don't have anything in writing, but we've, he's received some oral advice that under 1.6, confidential matters cannot be gone into, which is, according to them, everything that occurs between Mr. Bradley and Mr. Wade from 2018 forward. There's no such law that protects such confidences, only communications made in furtherance. And if I am mistaken, I apologize. But I think what we're being told is I don't have to say anything at all about Mr. Wade once I have an attorney-client relationship with him because it would be deemed confidential. And if it's deemed confidential, I can't talk about it. And there's no such case law to that effect in Georgia. There is no bar rule to that effect. The only thing the court has to do is say, are we talking about attorney-client privilege or pure confidences or confidential information? And once you decide it's confidential information, you order uh, Mr. Bradley to testify, and then it's up to his counsel to decide whether he wants to have his client held in contempt after you've ordered him to testify. And Judge, yes, that's an overstatement. We have not said that he can't testify to anything. The specific question on the table is what observations do you have from Mr. Wade and Ms. Willis from that point on? Now, they, the defense and their teams, have made an allegation of some impropriety. That same impropriety could be related to a divorce proceeding on every level. We're not here to say we're not talking. We're here to say we're not talking about things that came into his knowledge associated with his representation during the divorce. I realize there's an evidentiary standard, and then I realize that there's a cornerstone of what we do, which is the bar rule, the state bar rule 1.6. We violate that, and the whole thing comes tumbling down. We're not saying that you can't ask about did Mr. Wade enjoy a beer at a ball game. That wasn't the question. The question was specifically relating to some impropriety that they are trying to dig into. That is privileged information. And more importantly, Mr. Wade, uh, Mr. Bradley has explained now that he has no independent knowledge as relates to what she's referencing. She, he has said two times. So uh, there's not a good faith basis for her to continue to probe into this area because he says he has no independent knowledge outside of the attorney-client privilege. All right, Ms. Merchant, last word. Yes, Judge. Um, Judge, Mr. Bradley, if ordered, he's here by subpoena. If ordered to testify, he it's, it's not a issue with the bar. Um, my question was not about attorney-client privilege and being very careful not to ask anything that Mr. Wade asked in furtherance, but I've been informed that Robin Yardy is on the Zoom, and so if we want to start back on our original plan, we can call Ms. Yardy 
and have her testify and then put Mr. Wade up and we can go through the privilege issue with him. And then we won't have to have all these objections or else I'm, I'm happy to continue questioning Mr. Bradley. All right, so Mr. Mer Ms. Merchant, you're saying that uh, your understanding of the evidence that you plan to present that these issues are affected by Ms. Yurdy in terms of the scope of the privilege and the relationship? No, I think, uh, no, let me, thank you for letting me clarify that. I think that Ms. Yurdy is going to give me enough to get Mr. Wade on the stand. Once I get Mr. Wade on the stand, because they filed a motion to quash, and you said I had to present something before I could put Mr. Wade on the stand. So once I present Ms. Yurdy, I can put Mr. Wade up on the stand, and then I can put him up before I call Mr. Bradley. And then I may not even have to put Mr. Bradley at that point. All right. Um, Judge Matt. I'm sorry, who's... I'm on, I'm on Zoom, Your Honor. Attorney Durante Parker, Judge, uh, on behalf of Ms. Yardy. Your Honor, when we were here for the motion to quash earlier this week, it's my understanding, uh, as represented by defense counsel, that Mr. Bradley's testimony is, uh, so, so to speak, the bridge that was built to involve my client, uh, Ms. Yardy, into this, this matter altogether. Now it seems as though that is being usurped, and now she is being the quote unquote foundation for defense counsel's uh, presentation this morning. So we do object to that judge and would renew our motion to quash the subpoena because this is completely contradictory to what we uh, had via the hearing earlier this week, Your Honor. Judge, it, may I respond? Okay, Ms. Merchant. Okay. Um, Mr. Partridge, as I recall, that did not apply to your client as much. The uh, original motion to quash that you filed said she had absolutely no knowledge about anything what Ms. Merchant proffered and what I didn't hear you saying was not the case is that at some point Ms. Yurdy lived in a residence and shared a residence with Ms. Willis and potentially Mr. Wade at some point. So I think she's directly involved in the center of this. I don't think that really needs much in the way of foundation. Um, and, and Judge, I apologize, Your Honor, to, to talk over the court. That, that information, however, Your Honor, is my understanding came from Mr. Bradley, and that information was incorrect, as I informed the court earlier this week as well. There was never any time that Ms. Yardy and Ms. Willis lived together. Uh, there was a sublet of a condo that Ms. Willis resided in that had absolutely nothing to do with that of Ms. Yardy outside of Ms. Yardy subletting it to Ms. Willis. Ms. Yardy actually moved into a different residence uh, per our conversation with Ms. Merchant yesterday that that is exactly what it is. So there was no overlapping or any time that they stayed together, nor does Ms. Yardy have any information as it relates to Mr. Wade staying at that condo as well with that of, of Ms. Willis. So again, Judge, I, I'm renewing. No, we don't need to hear it again. Ms. Merchant. Judge, luckily I don't have to tell the state or them everything that I plan on introducing a witness for in response to their motion to quash. She has a lot of personal knowledge and when we had a motion to quash, I had to get over a good faith basis, and I presented that to the court. I did not spend four hours going through everything that this woman's going to testify to. She has personal knowledge. Is she actually here? I think she's on Zoom. What I understand, Mr. Partridge. Mr. Partridge, is your client with us? She's, she's on the Zoom platform, Your Honor, since I'm in Richmond County uh, uh, via my conflict. But she is on the Zoom platform at this time, Your Honor, in the waiting room. I believe she may have been admitted. I see a Robin on my screen. I'm assuming that that is my, my client, Ms. Yardy. Ms. Merchant, you want to examine her by the Zoom? That's fine. All right. We will waive Mr. any Abadi. Sixth Amendment objections to sure. her. That's fine. My only objection was the, was the representation at Monday's hearing was the good faith basis was based on what uh, she learned from Harris Bradley. And we know that is false. It's not true. So there is no good faith basis, and we would renew our objection and to quash the subpoena. That was not in regards to Ms. Yurdy. It certainly was. I, I, it was at like the 20 minute mark in the hearing. Judge, she has personal knowledge of this relationship. It's not what was represented on Monday. The personal knowledge came from Mr. Bradley. She has no good faith basis to explore this fishing, fishing expedition as it relates to Ms. Yurdy. This is a blatant misreading right, of the process. Uh, Ms. Merchant. I do believe that when we went through the motion to quash, there were, you grouped them into two categories, and each one of them we said that they were going to be impeached by Mr. Bradley. 
there, there were, well, we took Ms. Yurdy outside of Fulton County, Judge. So we talked about Fulton County differently um, than Ms. Yurdy. We took Ms. Yurdy out separately. She was different than Fulton County because there wasn't other issues. And, and again, so we're arguing a motion to quash. I responded to their argument on the motion to quash. Do, did I tell them that she's going to testify that she's known Miss Willis for years and that her middle name is Latrice? No, I didn't tell them everything she's going to testify to. I don't like if you wanted me to, I could have, but that has nothing to do. There is a witness that contradicts what they have said in court and they're doing everything they can to keep her off the stand and keep the truth away from this court. They filed a motion to quash. I showed a good faith basis. If my good faith basis is Mr. Bradley or Ms. Yearty or texts I've seen, it's still a good faith basis. There's no law that says I have to tell them every single good faith basis I have ahead of time. If we did, we would never have trials. All right, Ms. Merchant. Uh, appreciate the argument of counsel. I think uh, the standard on a motion to quash and a subpoena is not one where we're required to completely flush out and litigate every reason the witness may be relevant. And so we'll take these one at a time with Ms. Yurdy. Uh, I'll deny the motion to quash. And if, if your um, election, election and to proceed in your presentation of the evidence is to call her, then that's what we'll do. Thank you, Judge. So, Mr. Radley, you may be excused for now. Thank you. But subject to recall. We will call Ms. Yurdy. Would you like me to swear her judge? Or? I think we need to make sure. There we go. Deputy Scott, if we could swear in the witness. Ms. Yurdy, can you hear us? Yes, I can. All right. Raise your right hand, ma'am. You swear up front that the testimony you get a court will be the truth. That the truth will help you? Yes. Would you please state and spell your full name for the court? Robin Latrice Yurdy. Th thank you, Ms. Yurdy. Um, thank you for being here. Can you can you tell the judge um, when you first met Ms. Willis? Um, in college. Okay. So nineteen, probably ninety or ninety-one. Okay. And have you been friends since nineteen ninety or ninety-one? Yes. Okay. Um, when was the last time you spoke with Ms. Willis? Um, March of 20, March of 2022. Okay. Um, from 1991-ish till 2022, were you what you would consider good friends with Ms. Willis? Yes. Okay. Um, and did you all share personal information regularly? Yes. And, um, did you even come and work with her at the DA's office? Yes. And um, when she needed a place to stay, um, did you let her stay at your apartment? Your, um, yes. uh, it was a condo, right? Condo, yes. Okay. Do you remember approximately when she moved into your condo? Um, it was April of 2021. Okay, great. And. Um, you know that Ms. Willis and Ms. Wade met at a conference in October of 2019? I'm going to object to that, Your Honor, without a foundation for how this witness would know that. If Ms. Merchant can establish she has personal information of that, then um, certainly that's something the witness can testify to. But if it's she heard Understood, it Ms. Ms. Cross. All right, Ms. Uh, Merchant, you can lay the foundation. Do you have information that Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade met in October of 2019. I'm going to renew my objection, Your Honor. Information is not sourced to personal information. If the question can be rephrased, then that may address my concern. So, so Judge, I, let me, I just want to make sure that I understand. So they've objected to me calling Willis and Wade. It's just, it's just a matter of foundation. If you can just rephrase. Do you have knowledge of when Willis and Wade met? I'm going to object again. Personal knowledge. Uh, overruled. Thank you. Do you have personal knowledge of when Willis and Wade met? Yes. Okay. She told me that they met at a conference. I don't know what conference. Okay. I'm going to renew my objection, Your Honor. Clearly, this is not firsthand information from this um, witness. It's hearsay that was... Uh, but you said she told me. Yes, it's, it's 
statement against interest, Judge. If Ms. Willis... Just pause. I'm sorry. Okay, Ms. Yes. Cross. The representation of the witness, the testimony of the witness was that Ms. Willis, District Attorney Willis, had a conversation with her. There is no statement against interest. District Attorney Willis is not a, a party opponent in this case. The information that the witness has testified to came from Ms. Willis, and there's, uh, we have a hearsay objection to that. Why wouldn't she be considered a, a party opponent in this context? She's a representative of the state, Your Honor. This isn't private litigation or civil litigation. Obviously, the, the, the courts are where this is. Um, Ms. Willis is not on trial. Ms. Willis has not, is not a party to the litigation outside her obligation to pursue criminal charges for the state. Ms. Merchant, I Judge, guess, I guess it's, it's, it's evolved into a hearsay objection. Yes, Judge, and um, we plan on calling Ms. Willis to the stand. She's under subpoena, so hearsay will be cured. Uh, if there is a hearsay objection as to far as that issue. But we do still think that it's a statement against interest. Um, Ms. Willis has filed a document that states that they met at this municipal court conference. So I'm, Your Honor, <laughs> I, I think maybe I can streamline a little bit. State will stipulate that District Attorney Willis and uh, Mr. Wade met in October 2019 at the judicial conference that we've been talking about. There's no reason to get it secondhand from this witness. Well, well that's, that's true. All right. Do you accept the stipulation, Ms. Merchant? Yes. All right. Am I permitted then to, to ask questions about that since it's now not hearsay? Uh, if it's just to a stipulation, if it's just to that basic fact, I, I don't think we need a question, but if there's a okay. follow-up that you okay. think is admissible, go for it. Ms. Yerdy, um, you have personal knowledge that Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade began their romantic relationship soon after this time that they met at the municipal court. I'm going to object to that question. That certainly is a leading question. No foundation has been laid for how this witness would have personal knowledge of that. And until that's happened, the state objects. Judge. I, I think you can do a yes or no and then follow up with how she knows it. Thank you. Um, do you know if Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade started dating in October of 2019? I don't know if it was October of 2019. Could it possibly be November of 2019? Could possibly. Okay. And when we spoke, you said it was shortly after the municipal court conference, though, correct? Yes. Okay. So you know that their relationship, their personal relationship, began shortly after this municipal court conference? Yes. And when I say personal, romantic. Is that, is, I just want to make sure we don't get in an argument over what personal and romantic is later. When I ask you personal, do you take that to mean romantic? Yes. Okay. And do you understand it, that their relationship began in 2019 and continued until the last time you spoke with her? Yes. And you were essentially her best friend during this time, right? Not best friend, good okay. friend. Good friend, okay, close friend. And so would you frequently socialize with her? Yes. Okay. Um, and you saw her at work every day? Yes. So you had a chance to see them interact together on a personal level? Yes. Um, and so from everything that you saw, heard, witnessed, um, it's your understanding that they were in a romantic relationship beginning in 2019? Yes. And um, when you left the DA, oh, I'm sorry, let me ask you. Um, you said that Ms. Willis came to live with you in April of 2021. I'm sorry, April 1st, 2020 or 2021? She didn't live with I never, I never lived with her. Okay, I'm sorry. She took over your lease in April, April 1st, 2020, correct? No, 2021. 20, okay, I'm I had it both ways, so I'm glad you clarified. So when she took over your lease in April 1st, 2021, it's your understanding she moved out of the house that she was sharing with her father and started staying at the condo? Yes. And is it your understanding that that's because she needed to have her own space? Yes. Away from her father? Yes. Okay. Um, when you left the DA's office, was it, um, were you fired? No, I resigned. You resigned, okay. Just one moment, sir.
Can you tell us why you resigned the DA's office? Um, the number of things that was happening. A number of things that were happening, is that what you said, ma'am? Yes. Okay. What what was happening that you that caused you to resign? Um, it was a spiral of things. So, um, I guess the the last straw is I was, I was put in a department that I knew had no knowledge about something happened, and I didn't like it. They didn't like it. And that was it. Okay. Did you have any falling outs with Miss Willis? Well, we never spoke after that. You never spoke after that. Okay. Um, and so you're, you know, without going into all the, the painstaking details, there is no doubt in your mind that from 2019 until 2022, um, Miss Willis and Mr. Wade were in a romantic relationship. What's the question? Um, you have no doubt that their romantic relationship was in effect from 2019 until the last time you spoke with her. No doubt. Okay. And that's based on your personal observations and obser and you know speaking with them and seeing them together and things like that. Yes. Okay. No other questions. Thank you. The other uh, the other folks may have some questions for you, Mr. Yardy. Say that. No. Uh, if it's more than a couple questions, then sure. But if not, it's only a couple questions, okay. I think. Can the court reporter hear me okay? Uh, Ma'am, let me be very specific. Did you talk with Ms. Willis about her romantic relationship with Mr. Wade? Yes. Did Ms. Willis tell you on more than one occasion that she was engaged in a romantic relationship with Mr. Wade prior to you leaving the district attorney's office? Did she tell me or did I observe? I'm saying right now with the tell me. Yes. Did she tell you that in the year of 2020? Yes. In the year of 2021? Yes. Are you certain that Ms. Wade told you, I'm sorry, Ms. Willis told you about the romantic relationship with Mr. Wade prior to November 1st of 2021? Yes. Now, did you also have observations of Mr. Wade and Ms. Willis together prior to November 1st of 2021? Yes. And are those observations, were those in a social setting? Yes. And did you observe them do things that are uh, in common among people having a romantic relationship? Yes. Such as, can you give us an example? Hugging, kissing, disaffection. All, all of all before November first of twenty twenty one. Correct. Yes. That's all I have. Mr. Stocks. Ma'am, did I understand you to say that there was a period of time when you and Miss Willis lived together? No. Mr. Durham? No, nothing for me, Your Honor. Mr. McDougall? Nothing, Your Honor. Mr. Rice? Good morning, Ms. Yardy. Um, are you, were you aware in 2021 of any trips, social trips, that Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade took together? No. Are you aware of any social trips that Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade took together in 2022? No. Are you aware of them in 2020 or 2021 spending the evening together overnight? No. No further Mr. Gillen? Uh, no questions. Mr. McCullough? Okay. And Mr. Cromwell? No questions, Your Honor. Ms. Cross? I do have some questions. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Yurdy, we haven't met before, is that correct? Correct. You're able to see and hear me okay? Yes. All right. I want to start with a couple things. Now, I think you've made it clear that you never lived, and we'll call it the South Fulton address, the South Fulton condo that you were leasing. You never lived at that address with the District Attorney Willis, correct? Correct. 
and never at any time? Never. All right. You never observed or have any information about District Attorney Wade and District Attorney Willis and Nathan Wade living together, correct? Correct. You don't have any information about that? No, I don't. Anybody said that that information was sourced to you, then that's incorrect. That's incorrect. Did District Attorney Willis pay rent at that establishment, at that condo while you while she lived there and you were living elsewhere? Yes. Who paid the rent? She did. Nathan Wade ever pay the rent? No. And you never told anyone otherwise? No. I didn't answer I didn't hear your answer there, Ms. Yard. Did you ever tell anyone uh, otherwise? No. All right. So let's talk for a second about your time at the district attorney's office. You were disciplined several times in the district attorney's office during your employment there, correct? No. You weren't written up ever for poor performance, Ms. Yardy? Once, not several. One time you were written up for poor performance where you counseled several times about your performance in the district attorney's office that was subpar? No. Did the district attorney tell you that your performance was insufficient and that you were going to be fired? No. That never happened? No. Maybe when we went at the end? Mm. What's the question? The question, Ms. Yurdy, was did the district attorney ever counsel you on your poor performance in the district attorney's office uh, prior and inform you that you were going to be fired? Mm. I don't really know how to answer that. I'm looking for the truth. I, I, I don't really know how to answer that. I mean, uh, a situation happened that wasn't my fault. And I, I either was going to resign or be let go, so. You understood that that was the situation. You could resign or you could be let go. Correct, yes. You were not welcome to stay. No. And the conversation where you were informed that you could resign or you could be fired, uh, that conversation was not the first conversation you had with the district attorney about your poor performance in the office, correct? Well, it was kind of a spiral, but no. Yeah, it was. Whatever the situation was. I understood, Mr. Stato. Ms. Cross. Ms. Yurdy, the circumstances of your leaving the district attorney's office uh, ended your friendship with the district attorney Willis, correct? Yes. You all haven't spoken since? No. All right, I want to talk about the representations that you made here um, this morning, Ms. Yurdy, about any relationship between District Attorney Willis and Mr. Wade. I want you to tell me what was the first time any, let me ask it this way, you said that District Attorney Willis personally informed you of a romantic relationship. Is that what you testified to? Yes. When did that conversation that you purport to have uh, to recall, when did that happen? I mean, I don't have a month or, or a day, Where but just talking, just talking in general. Your Honor, would you like to keep this witness under um, subpoena, but that's all the questions I have right now. All right, thank you, Ms. Cross. I, I I mean, redirect, I'm sorry. All right, on those points only. Yes, just those points. Um, the state asked you a lot about um, when you were let go, when you resigned. Um, did something happen as far as um, purchasing that you didn't feel comfortable with, purchasing things through um, the county for Ms. Willis that caused you to, to not be comfortable working there anymore? No. Um, and I didn't tell you how to testify here today, though, right? Right. Okay. And everything you've testified to is from your personal knowledge? Yes. Okay. And um, 
you've told the truth here today? Yes. Okay. Um, Judge, I believe she's only under my subpoena, and I'm fine releasing her from that subpoena. Oh, I'm sorry. By, sh by show of hands from other counsel, starting with Mr. Sado. Your Honor, I believe the door's been opened now to ask this particular witness about statements that um, Ms. Willis made to her. Um, she brought it up on cross-examination on a couple of occasions. Did Ms. Willis say this or inform you of that? So I'd like to now ask her questions directly about what Ms. Willis told her about her romantic relationship. I think we'll take those one at a time, question by question, and we can address those to see. I don't, I don't know about a complete opening of the door. We'll, we'll see where we go. The first time that you spoke to Ms. Willis about her relationship, romantic relationship with Mr. Wade, do you happen to remember what Ms. Willis said? In essence, not word for word, but in essence, what she said. No. Do you remember the first time she told you, in whatever words were used, that there was a romantic relationship? No. Is this the kind of conversation that you had with your best friend uh, ongoing over a period of time in which it was common knowledge to you that there was an ongoing relationship between Ms. Willis and Mr. Wade? What's the question? Yes, I'll ask you again. Is the nature of your then relationship with Ms. Willis such that you were having these ongoing conversations, that is, best friend type conversations, about her relationship with Mr. Wade? I don't remember. Without getting any further into too much detail, is there any doubt at all that Mr. Wade and Miss Willis had a romantic relationship as was told to you prior to November of 2020? Uh, she, she was already asked that question by Miss Merchant. I just didn't know whether that needed to be she said, and She said no, no doubt. Okay. All right. Uh, any other defense counsel by show of hands? Seeing none, uh, uh, last recross from Ms. Cross. Anything else? Uh, not at this time, Your Honor, but we've asked okay. the witness to remain under subpoena and subject to recall. Judge, she's under my subpoena, and I'm releasing her. If they want to subpoena her, they will welcome to do Ms. Cross. Uh, I would prefer that the court keep her under subpoena. Yeah, I think sure. um, given the representation of Ms. Merchant, given how she intends to proceed today, then this witness may, uh, may need to be recalled. All right. Uh, understood. Um, in the interest and in knowing that we may have to bring witnesses back and forth, uh, I think it's in the interest of effective presentation of the evidence here. Ms. Yerdy, you are still going to remain under the auspices of your subpoena. And so please stay in touch with your attorney. We may need you to rejoin us on Zoom at some point today or tomorrow. Understood? Okay. All right. Don't discuss your testimony with any other potential witnesses, all right? All right. All right. You can log off. And Judge, I'd ask, uh, just can Mr. Parcher stay on for just one moment? For what reason? Um, the state made some allegations that I misrepresented some things to the court, and I, I'd just like the opportunity to clear that up, that Mr. Partridge is the one that told me that they lived together for a month. They've, they've called me everything but a liar today, and so I just think that it's appropriate for everyone to know where that information came from. All right. Ms. Merchant, I think you've... Uh, Made your position clear. That's, uh, I don't think we want to need to get sidetracked on that. All right. Uh, Ms. Merchant, you can call your next witness. Thank you. We call Mr. Wade. Judge, may I be excused as well, please? All right. Take care, Mr. Partridge. We call Judge. Mr. Wade. All right. Ms. Cross. Your Honor, the motion to quash Mr. Wade's subpoena uh, was held in advance uh, waiting for the representation. I, I believe that the good faith basis that Ms. Uh, Merchant represented on Monday, I think that that's Clearly not accurate. Understand the testimony that's now in the record. Um, Mr. Wade is uh, available, but we maintain that at this time that the motion to, to quash probably sh um, should be granted to understand the court's ruling. Uh, well, Ms. Cross, I, uh, I'll, I'll say yes. On Monday, it did seem like the focus was that Mr. Bradley would be the, the, the hook that makes every witness potentially relevant. And we really haven't been able to explore that uh, on the privilege issues that we'll likely have to tackle again later. But for now, uh, as it, the evidence in front of the court at the moment is that we have a witness who has said this relationship may have predated the affidavit that Mr. Wade filed. I don't see a way around um, the relevance of his testimony. And so I'll deny the uh, state's motion to quash uh, the subpoena of Mr. Wade. Ms. Merchant.
My name is Nathan Wade, N-A-T-H-A-N-W-A-D-E. Good morning, Mr. Wade. Good morning. Um, prior to filing this motion to disqualify, you and I were friends, correct? Yes. And, in fact, I supported you when you ran for judge in 2016. You did. I wore your shirts. My kids wore your oh, shirts. Mr. Merchant, Fines. your personal opinions have no relevance. Okay. And, uh, and I, uh, I mean that in the best way. That's All completely right. fine. I Let's will get to on. the point. <laughs> Thank you. No, no, no. I, totally fine. Thank you. Um, you filed for divorce from your wife on November 2nd, 2021? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And um, in that divorce proceeding, did you file um, answers, things such as interrogatories? I did. Okay. And so interrogatories are where you're responding to things that basically answers that the other side is asking? Yes, ma'am. And um, I've got your complaint for divorce. I'm just going to mark it for the record as Defendant's Exhibit 2. Um, the first interrogatories that you answered, those were December 27th, 2021. Is that right? They're about this month. Okay. And in those... Um, you were asked different things, but those are sworn. You actually swear to those. You verify them, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and so that verification is where you're swearing under oath that everything in it is true? Yes, ma'am. And let's see. The um, You were asked if you had any documents for, which relate to the purchase of gifts by you to any person other than the defendant with whom you have or had a relationship, romantic relationship, from the date of your marriage, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you responded under oath that you didn't have any documents to that. That's correct. Um, you again responded to an interrogatory. You updated those responses on May 30th, 2023? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you actually sent those directly to opposing counsel in the divorce? Yes, ma'am. I think so. Um, but in that one, you answered none again to that question, correct? Yes, ma'am. So May 30th, 2023, you said that you didn't have any documents showing any purchase of anything with someone that you had a romantic relationship with. I believe the interrogatory was, was gifts. Okay. Not anything, gifts. And I, and I have it if you want to take a look. Um, I'm going to mark, okay, so, so just for the record, I've got your complaint for divorce marked as number two. I've got the verification and the interrogatories from 2021. I'm going to mark those as three. And then your May 30th, 2023, I'm going to mark as four. Um, Judge, may I approach the witness? You may. Thank you. That is what I marked as four. This is what I marked as three. Okay. Thank you, Judge. All right, if you would take a look at what I marked as two, three, and four. Just see if you recognize those. I do. And um, are those, that's your divorce complaint, um, and then your 2021 interrogatory and your 2023 interrogatory, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Are they a fair and accurate representation of what is filed in that case? Yes, ma'am. I'd move to admit those into evidence. And is this is two, three, and four? Um, it's two, three, and four, yes. All right. Any objection from the state? The divorce. It's on the district. No objection to three and four, and subject to Ms. Merchant's representation that two is a filing of divorce. I just don't have a divorce complaint. I don't have that in front of me, but subject to that representation, no objection. All right, and by show of hands, any objection from other defense counsel? Seeing none, defendants two, three, and four. Uh, this should be Romans, well, we'll just saw them, two, three, and four, admitted without objection. Um, so that interrogatory that you filed in 2023, that's the one where you said no, that you didn't have any documents um, relating to the purchase of gifts um, that you had a romantic relationship with someone, right? Number, which interrogatory are we talking Number four, 2023. Which number in the interrogatory? Number four. So, which number interrogatory are you referring to? It's Defendant's Exhibit Number Four. I, I have Defendant's Exhibit Four here. Uh huh. Which number interrogatory are we referring? To? Oh, which like which number out of the questions? Yes, ma'am. Um, it is number 20, 24, 25, 26.
Um, it's supposed to be number. <laughs> I guess they're all numbered one. So <laughs> number one, number one again, and then the third number one. That's your five or something. You didn't put page numbers on. It's you didn't put any I don't know how to tell you what number one because when you've responded you put number one on all of them. You so. just point to it. Seats for restaurants, hotels, bars, things like that. The first number one? I believe it's the second number one. The second number one? Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So it asks you if you have any receipts for things like restaurants, bars, hotels, things like that, where you accompanied a member of the other sex romantic partner. Correct? It says identify any and all occasions. Okay. And so, it says to identify any and all occasions where you entertained a member of the other sex, okay, who's not related to blood, mm -hmm. and including dining, drinking, restaurants, bars, pubs, hotels, all of that. Okay. And what was your answer to that? None. None. Okay. So May 30th, 2023, you prepared, you prepared this document. I did. Submitted it. I did. And it says none as far as entertaining a member of the opposite sex. It does. Okay. No hotels, no bars, no restaurants. Correct. Okay. Um, you again updated that. Let's see. You updated it on December 22nd, 2023. And I'm going to mark that as defendant's number five, and I have copies. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then you updated it once again on January 26, 2024, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay, that one. May I approach the witness again, Judge? Is that what you're marking as defense exhibit six? Yes, Judge. I'm marking um, number six is the January 26, 2024 interrogatory, and then 20. Oh, that one. And then number five is the December 22nd, 2023 interrogatory response. All right. Are you tendering those at this time? Yes, I am. All right. Five. Any objection from any counsel to defense exhibit five and six? Yes, sir. No objection. Thank you, Ms. Cross. Seeing none others. Lovely. I have time for you. Um, so now that you have those, let's just talk about those for a minute. Um, those were verified, so sworn under oath. Mm -hmm. Okay. And one of them was December 22nd and then of this last year, so last December, and then one was just recently submitted in January, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, in May, May 20, what, let's see, May 10th, 2023, Judge Thompson heard a motion to compel in your divorce case as well, correct? Yes. Okay. And you were actually held in... Willful contempt. Yeah, I'm going to object to the relevance of uh, his credibility um, is relevant, Judge. And if he was held in willful contempt for failing to provide answers and documents, I think that's relevant to this court. How is that a prior false act or crime of conviction or anything else allowed for impeachment under the rules of evidence? I, it, I'm not offering it as a prior bad act or something like that. I'm offering it towards his credibility, Judge, which you get to determine. Um, if he's made misrepresentations in these pleadings, um, you're, to, you're here to determine whether or not he's telling the truth or not. So if another court has held him in contempt and that's part of the divorce proceeding, I think it's relevant. But just contempt generally can be for many different things, like a, but a failure for, to produce is not necessarily a false act, right? Right, and he's welcome to explain that. No, he may not have to. Ms. Cross. I, I object to the relevance of that. That's clearly not an, a proper impeachment. Uh, we're going pretty far afield into divorce matters that don't have any direct relevance to anything that's pending before the court. 
subject to the relevance of that and need further investigation. All right. I'm not seeing uh, that being a proper grounds for impeachment uh, sustained. Okay. Let's talk about this December 22nd, 2023 um, verification. I tabbed it for you. Um, again, they asked you if you had any documentations showing proof of this relationship, proof of any relationship, correct? I'm going to object to the phrasing of that question. I don't believe that's an accurate read of the interrogatory. All right. Let's be precise, Ms. Merchant. I, I, you, please read it. I want to make sure I'm accurate. Please read it. Which, which number? This one actually has a number. I tabbed it for you, so you should be able to open right to the page. Um, it's number 22. The question specifically is if you have any tangible evidence of any nature in your possession or control or any other person or entity which relates to any manner of your activities to any person with whom you've had a sexual relationship during your marriage. Tangible evidence is notes, cards, letters, photos, films, recordings, documents, tapes, video recordings, receipts, invoices, and other tangible evidence. Yes. Okay. And you answered that you did not have any documents to that effect, correct? Correct. Okay. And um, that was on December 22nd, 2023? Yes, ma'am. You updated those responses again after the motion to disqualify was filed, though, correct? When was the motion filed? January 8th, 2024, when I filed the motion to disqualify you and alleged that you had a romantic relationship with Ms. Willis. Yes, ma'am. After that, you updated these responses, correct? Yes, ma'am. And so your new responses, you now changed your answer from that you didn't have any of this to you're asserting the privilege under 245505, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and both of these are under oath. Yes, ma'am. You also updated your response to the question about spending time with someone other than your spouse for dinner, drinks, things at restaurants, bars, hotels, or the other person's home, correct? Yes, ma'am. So in December of 2023, you said no to all that, and then in January, after I filed my motion, you said privilege to all that, Fifth Amendment privilege. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and I, just to be clear, was I'm it? Sorry, I'm going to object the characterization of Fifth Amendment privilege. I think it was a statutory privilege, and that's, that's quite just, different. That's why I was just about to ask him. So that privilege covers infamy or Fifth Amendment privilege, correct? So it's a privacy privilege is what I updated my response to do. Once okay. you filed your motion to uh, intervene mm -hmm. in my divorce action, um, I then figured that you were in talks with my a former wife's uh, divorce lawyer. Okay. Um, and because of that, um, I asserted a privacy privilege because I didn't want the uh, proceedings of my divorce to bleed over into the proceedings in this case, which is the case that obviously you're involved in. So your answer is in December of 2023 that you didn't have any documents about any travel that you took with Ms. Willis. That wasn't true, though, correct? They didn't ask me about any documents regarding Ms. Willis. A romantic partner. They asked you for documents regarding a romantic partner. So I'm sorry, I, I inserted Miss Willis's name. Let me rephrase the question. They asked you for documents about travel with a romantic partner in December 2023. And you under oath said you did not have any of those, correct? I did not. Okay. And they asked me about gifts. I right. Never purchased a gift for Miss Willis. And they asked you about receipts for dinner, receipts for drinks, hotels, bars, and restaurants. And you said you did not have any of those. I did not and do not have any receipts for any of those things. Okay. And part of the civil discovery, they say that even if you don't have it in your pocket, if it's within your purview, you got to get it and give it to them, correct? Your Honor, I'm going to object again to the relevance of the, the questions about the scope of civil discovery. I think she's asked him about statements he made in pleadings. Um, the answers are already in the record. And um, All right. To the extent you're trying to establish a prior... Uh, Ms. Truth, uh, Ms. Merchant, uh, I'll allow you to ask a few more follow-ups, but if it's not there, we have to move on. Thank you. Um, so in 2023, December, you said you didn't have any receipts. I do not have any receipts. I did not have any receipts. But you did travel with Ms. Willis in 2023, correct? I did. And you traveled with her in 2022, correct? I did. And you traveled with her in 2021, correct? No. So you only traveled with her in 2022 and 2023? 2022 and 2023 is what I recall. That's what you recall? Yes. Okay. Um, 
So you just don't remember if you traveled with her in 2021? 2022 and 2023 is what I recall. Is what you recall. My question is, did you travel with her in 2021? I'm not recalling any travel in 2021. So it's not yes or no, you just don't remember? I'm not recalling any travel in 2021. So you did not travel with her in 2021? Your Honor. This has been covered. Let's keep going. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Let's see, you, um, you filed an affidavit in this case, correct? I did. Okay, and I marked that already. I gave it to the state um, as number one. Is it number one? May I approach, Judge? You may. Thank you. In that affidavit, you swore under oath, correct? Yes, ma'am. And in that affidavit, you swore that, um, well, first of all, do you recognize the affidavit? I do. Okay. Did you sign the affidavit under oath? I did. And you gave this affidavit specifically to refute the allegations that I had raised? Yes, ma'am. Nobody forced you to sign this? No, ma'am. You chose to sign it? I did. And you signed it on purpose to, to admit into court to I refute did. allegations? I did. Um, you signed it specifically to prove that you were not in a relationship with Willis prior to November 2021, correct? Correct. And you were a lawyer when you signed it? I was. And you're still a lawyer today, correct? I am. When were you barred? 1999. Okay. And um, you believe that your relationship with Ms. Willis is subject to attorney-client privilege, correct? I'm going to object to that, Your Honor. I don't think that's factually correct. I don't think that's a relevant question. And I don't think it's appropriate to question this witness about the scope of his attorney-client privilege um, he's got an attorney who can speak for him for that, but questioning the witness, I think, is inappropriate. All right, so a lot to unpack there. Uh, the question is simply that does he believe there's a relationship that exists in the terms of attorney client privilege between him and Ms. Willis? Is, is that accurate, yes, Ms. Judge, It was. I asked okay. if he believed his relationship with Ms. Willis is subject to attorney client privilege. Okay, I don't see why a yes or no would be barred. I, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm not mis maybe I'm not understanding the question. If if the question is, does Mr. Wade and District Attorney Willis have an attorney-client relationship? It is not. There's no foundation for that. If the question to the witness is, does his relationship with District Attorney Willis impact his attorney-client relationship with his divorce attorneys? Uh, that I don't think is an appropriate question for that for that witness. First, if, if, uh, first I believe is a proper phrasing. The second, I think there's been a representation that Mr. Wade preserves and doesn't waive anything, and so I think asking him particular questions in order to potentially uh, backdoor a waiver is inappropriate, and that, that's that's my question. All right, uh, if we're just trying to again assess where a privilege does or does not exist, and we're not actually getting into it. Uh, I think that's, we can establish those, you know, uh, parameters, but uh, Ms. Merchant, can you rephrase the question based on that concern and we'll see where we are? Yes. Um, do you believe, you, that your relationship with Ms. Willis is, is subject to an attorney-client privilege? Not if you and Ms. Willis have one, but do you believe that that relationship is subject to, to one? I, I'm going to object to that question as it's phrased. In what context? Uh, any conversation with his attorneys is privileged. Uh, that, that I think, is, is clear. What's not clear to me from that question is, is that is Ms. Merchant asking, in the context of your communication with your attorneys, is that, is that or outside that context is it? Right. Um, and, and Ms. Merchant, I think we need to figure out what, what are we getting at with this. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out if he thought that their relationship is subject to an attorney-client privilege. I mean, it's been asserted. I think it's going to be asserted, and that's, that was all I was asking. Um, I mean, the, the actions themselves wouldn't be an issue. It's more okay, communication. Someone saw, someone saw them. Someone had knowledge of it. Is that a right. client privilege? I want to All right. Know. Well, I, I guess I would find his legal opinion on this isn't, isn't okay. relevant. We can deal with that as it comes up. So <laughs> sustained. Um, in 2022, um, in this affidavit, you swore that you and Willis developed a personal relationship. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you said that that didn't, that didn't develop until 2022, correct? That's correct. Okay. And that's different from what you said in your pleading in May 2023 in the divorce case, correct? No, ma'am. In May 2023, when you were asked if you had a 
um, if you'd had any affairs, essentially. And you said none. That's correct. Okay. So in May, you said you had not, in May 2023, in the divorce case, you said you had not had a personal relationship, an affair, a romantic relationship with anyone. That's correct. But you told this court in the affidavit that you did have one that started in 2022. So that would have been ongoing at 2023. So here I think there's a distinction, if you'd allow me to explain. Please. Um, the interrogatory um, asked the question, during the course of your marriage, um, or, or to date, it actually says, well, I'm going to request that the witness be permitted to answer. Mr. Wade. So my marriage was irretrievably broken in 2015, ma'am, um, by agreement. Um, my wife and I agreed that uh, once she had the affair in 2015, that we'd get a divorce. Um, we didn't get a divorce immediately because my children were still in school and I refused to allow them to grow up without their father at the time. So we waited. We waited until the youngest graduated and we dropped her off at college and then filed for the divorce. So if you're asking me about the interrogatory as it relates to having uh, the 2022 relationship with District Attorney Willis, I want to say, because my marriage was irretrievably broken, I was free to have a relationship. So the question, though, was if you had had a relationship. And in 2023, you said you did not. And that is different than what you said in this affidavit, correct? No, ma'am. I said during the course of my marriage. So in but you believed it to... Let him finish, Ms. Merchant. So in 2015, my marriage was irretrievably broken. So I did not have a relationship with anyone during the course of my marriage. Um, and in that interrogatory, they asked you if you had any receipts for travel with someone of the other sex up until the time you were answering it. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And you said that you didn't. You've already testified to that earlier. But in this affidavit, you said you swore that you had travel expenses and shared expenses on travel with Ms. Willis. Again, during the course of my marriage, I had no relationship or I, receipts. I'm not asking about during the course of your marriage. Your Honor, I'm going to ask the witness to be allowed to answer the question. Continue. I have no problem with him answering. Okay. Um, as it relates to receipts today, I don't have any receipts, ma'am. So you don't have any travel receipts um, available to you for any travel that you did with Ms. Willis? I don't have any receipts, no, ma'am. Um, no receipts that, so, so you're, you used your business credit card for these trips, correct? I use my business credit card for everything. Okay. I, yes. Um, you used it for your kids' tuition. Yes, ma'am. You used it for personal travel with Ms. Wells. Yes, ma'am. And you have receipts from those business credit cards that you have to file with your taxes, correct? No, ma'am. No. I, I, I filed a statement. I turn over the statement and whatever is there on the statement, the accountant looks at it. And the account says, okay, this is personal, goes over here, this is business, goes over here, here are your taxes. So you have those statements. We'll call them statements instead of receipts. You have those statements, correct? I have the statements, yes, ma'am. Okay. But when you answered the interrogatory under oath, you said you did not have anything to show the records of I, travel with Ms. Willis. I answered the question. I had no receipts, ma'am. You had no receipts, but you had statements. I ordered the statement, yes, ma'am. You did order the statement. Okay. And um, so, so we're just talking the semantics between invoice and statements or receipt. I'm sorry. I'm going to object, Your Honor, to the um, argumentative tone of the question. I believe it's an ask and answer. So. All right. So same. Um, in, let's see. You also in this affidavit said that no funds paid to you for compensation as your role as special counsel was shared with Willis, correct? That's correct. Um, and that you never cohabitated with Willis, correct? That's correct. Um, by cohabitation, does that mean that you never spent the night with Willis? I spent the night with her during spent travel. Night. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so when, so I just want to qualify your term, your use of the term cohabitation. That means you didn't live together. That's correct. But you did spend the night together. Yes. When was the first time you spent the night together? Your Honor. Um, that's the subject of his affidavit, Judge. Right, but it might not be the subject of this hearing. So the question is the nature and extent of the relationship 
And so if they just spent the night on a single occasion, I don't, I, I would be, I don't think we're going to document in detail every single time that happened. And I don't intend to do that, Judge, but I think what is relevant is when the relationship started. And that's what you had indicated on. Well, why don't we start with that question and go from there? And that's what I asked when the first time he, he spent the night with her was. That's, okay. that's what I asked. That's a different question, isn't it? Okay, so let's not talk about when you spent the night. When did your romantic relationship with Ms. Willis begin? 2022. When in 2022? Early 2022. So you were appointed in November of 2021? Yes, ma'am. And your relationship started early. What's early? January? February? Around March. Around March. But you two met at an October 2019 um, judicial conference, correct? Yes, ma'am. And um, describe your relationship at that point then. Which point? 2019. So I was at a judicial conference to teach a course, if you will, um, to newer judges. Um, I did that in 2019. Um, as I was exiting the conference, um, another judge was standing outside who was a friend of mine. I stopped and exchanged pleasantries with, with her. Um, and standing, talking to her at the time was then Judge Willis. She introduced us um, at that time. We shook hands, exchanged business cards, and I got into my vehicle and left the conference. So. That meeting was probably three minutes. Okay. When was the next time you talked to her? Didn't talk to her again, probably maybe a month or a month and a half had gone by. Okay. So you talked to her November, maybe? Maybe. On the phone? On the phone. Okay. How regularly did you speak with her in 2021 on the phone? In 2021. I'm sorry, 20, 2019. I'm so sorry. 2019. How frequently did you speak with her on the phone? 2019, after the meeting, I probably talked to her two or three times. She would have questions. Um, I was the district rep for the particular district that I sat in. Um, okay. And the judges would, when they would have questions, they sometimes would go to the rep. So she was outside of my district but um she would call me she felt comfortable calling me to ask me the questions i don't know if you know the the racial makeup of uh, the certain benches but it wasn't very diverse so she felt comfortable calling me for advice um and she did that and we had also in common that she was starting um a private law practice at the time and I'd already had mine up and going and we talked about balancing the demands of the the bench with that private practice so we didn't we didn't talk that often but when she okay. had questions of mostly legal issues that would come up she would call me I just want to make sure because my question was just how many times and you said two to three times right okay and in 2022 how frequently did you speak in 2022 this is um, before you were appointed i'm sorry perhaps as much as uh to timeline 2022 i'm sorry 2020 2020 how frequently did you speak in 2020 2020 it was um more more frequent than the 19 um obviously but more frequent, can you tell me approximately a month how often you think you spoke with her mm. on the phone? Your Honor, I'm, I'm going to object to the granular detail. Um, I, I think uh, Mr. Wake can certainly answer however he wants to, but if we're going to go through every time you spoke on the phone as opposed to generally characterizing the relationship, it would um, be more detailed than this necessary. Judge, I'm not going to go through every time they spoke on the phone. I'm asking for generally how frequently they spoke. I think at that level, that's fine. Overall. Thank you. About how frequently did you speak in 2020? Per month? It, I mean, if it was two or three times that entire year, you can tell me that. If, oh, if no, it no. was more than that, then you can quantify it by month. No, no, no. We, we spoke on the telephone often. I mean, I don't know how many. I couldn't give you a, a, a amount of time because you remember 
COVID happened and the world was shut down. But um, so we spoke on the phone more than 2019, Deborah. Okay, let's let's qualify it. Before her election in 2020, how much, how frequently did you speak? You mean as she was campaigning? Before the election. Before, yes, as she was campaigning, before she was elected. It's, it's two different animals. As um, she was campaigning before she was elected. Okay, so during the course of her campaign, um, we didn't talk as much, obviously, because she was busy. Fulton County is a, a large jurisdiction to cover. Um, but we didn't talk a whole lot. But she did know that I had gone through the election process. So when things would come up, um, that and, she and had questions about, she would call me and ask me. So And just to be fair, I, be I've only known this version. Judge, actually, he's not so, asked and answered. And, I mean, I don't mind him explaining, but I just wanted to know how many times. I mean, if we talk about every conversation they talked about, I... I he's gonna let, you got to let him finish his sentence, I, and then if you need to redirect <laughs> him or have me direct him, I can. Mr. Wade, you can continue. Yes, sir. So, so sometimes it would be like a three-second call. She would go, have you, during your election, have you ever seen this? And I would say, no, but here's what I would do. And we'd hang up. Um, she had a lot of professionals working for her, but um, she trusted my judgment, so she called me. And it, you know, it'd be a brief conversation, but she called. So my question was, how frequently did you speak with her prior to her election? I, I, I <laughs> frequently? Infrequently? More than 2019, um, but it wasn't a, a everyday thing, no. In 2021, before you were appointed in November, so January to November 2021, the only time I'm talking about, how frequently did you speak with Ms. Willis on the phone? In 2021, then it became frequent. Frequent? Yes. Okay. But you did not work at the DA's office at that point, correct? I did not. Um, so the affidavit that you submitted, um, you showed on it, you submitted one record that showed that Ms. Willis had paid a couple hundred dollars for one flight, correct? Say again? The affidavit that you submitted to this court mm -hmm. showed that Ms. Willis had paid for one flight several hundred dollars. Is that correct? Mm, no, ma'am. I think that, are you drawing a distinction for her paying for a flight or for her actually booking a flight? Because those, those are two separate things. It's, I will re-ask re it. The affidavit you filed in this court, mm -hmm. you alleged that Ms. Willis paid for one flight. Paid for one flight, correct? No, ma'am. You, you did no, not allege she paid for one flight. No, ma'am. What I what I allege is, what I allege is that our travel was split roughly evenly. So where you see I have booked the flight or I've paid for a flight with my credit card, what you don't see is that she covered her own flight re reimbursement to me. The so flights that the flights that. You see here are the flights that she would have booked with her own resources, with her own car. And there's one flight, correct? One flight reflecting that, that she actually booked. Miss Merchant, let him finish and then you can redirect him. One flight that she actually booked, yes. The other flights I booked, she paid for. So the affidavit. You submitted one flight that she booked and paid for. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I'm, I'm going to object to the phrasing of that question. The line in the affidavit is not as Ms. Merchant is representing it. It said examples of the District Attorney, District Attorney Willis purchasing plane tickets for she and I with her personal funds were attached as an exhibit. It certainly did not represent that it was the only example of the District Attorney purchasing flights for uh, Mr. Wade or for compensating um, other travel. All right. I understand, Ms. Cross. I think that's something you can, it's now on the record, but also something you can take on Cross. Thank you. And, and just so everybody is clear, all I asked you is your affidavit, you submitted proof of one flight that she paid for and booked. That's all I'm asking. Correct? With the explanation, yes, ma'am. Okay. That's all 
I needed. Um, you said in the affidavit that you roughly shared travel, though, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So this roughly sharing travel, you're saying she reimbursed you? She did. And where did you deposit the money she reimbursed you? Oh, it was cash. She didn't, she didn't give me any checks. So she paid you cash for her share of all these vacations? Mr. Schaefer, you'll step out if you do that again. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And so all of the vacations that she took, she paid you cash for? Yes, ma'am. And you purchased all of these vacations on your business credit card, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you included those in deductions on your taxes, correct? No, ma'am. No, you did not? No, ma'am. Okay. Um, we'll get to that in just a minute then. Let's see. Um, so the only thing that you have actual documentary proof, not cash, is this one receipt that you attached to the affidavit? Is that correct? Your Honor, I object to that question. That is a mischaracterization of the assertion that is in the affidavit. I'm asking. So then he can deny it. <laughs> I think he can fend for himself. Ms. Merchant. Is this the only written proof that you have of a trip she paid for? That I have? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you submitted the one piece of written evidence that you have that she paid for something. Everything else is in cash. Is that accurate? No. That's not accurate. Okay. Please tell me, what other receipts do you have then that show that she paid for things? I don't have them. Okay. okay. So this is the only receipt that you have to show that she paid for travel? That I have, yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. In your divorce case, you filed a domestic relations financial affidavit, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. The first one you filed was in January 2022, right? They're about, yes, ma'am. And those are under oath? Yes. Okay. And um, you also filed corporate taxes in 2022, correct? Yes. Okay. And um, tell me about your, your business. Are you, do you have a partnership or are you a solo practitioner? As it stands today? Yes. So today um, I have a separate PC, my law partner, has his own separate PC. Okay. So, but we're under the same umbrella, under the same roof. So we share expenses, we share income, and we split it. So are you a partnership? We are a partnership in the sense of we share expenses, we share income. Are you registered with the state of Georgia as a partnership? So, the WBC firm that included myself, Terrence Bradley, and Christopher Campbell, we were registered with the Secretary of State as a partnership okay. um, for a short period of time. Um, when that was dissolved, though, right, in 2023? I'm going to object to the witness answer this question. Mr. Wade, did you have something else to add there? I did. Um, when uh, things happened and we excused Mr. Bradley from that partnership, it left Christopher Campbell and myself. So now you have two separate PCs under the same umbrella, mm -hmm. um, sharing expenses and income. Okay. So let me just narrow down my questions then. Are you registered? And have you been registered at any time in the state of Georgia as Wade and Campbell? Wade, no ma'am. You've never been registered as a partnership? As Wade and Campbell, no ma'am. Wade and Campbell, yes, thank you. But as Wade Bradley Campbell, yes ma'am. Wade Bradley Campbell was registered on April 1st, 2021 and administratively dissolved on September 8th, 2023, correct? Yes ma'am. Okay. Other than that partnership, you have always <laughs> been registered as law office of Nathan Wade? Yes ma'am. Not with Chris Campbell? Correct. Thank you. So the affidavit that you filed in your divorce case, the first one in 2022, I think I'm up to number seven. I'm going to just show you, give you a group of exhibits so we don't have to go back and forth. I'm marking the 2022 as seven. I'm marking the 2024 as eight. I'm marking the, um, the, credit card statements as nine. 
and your taxes is 10. Okay. Okay. I, I object to taxes, um, the relevance of them at this point. Uh, the relevance of this entire business structure doesn't seem clear to me as either impeaching or relevant to the issues that the courts, uh, under the court's consideration. But insofar as talking about tax returns and other things like that, certainly that uh, should be redacted, and um, I, I would object to the relevance of it. I agree they should be redacted. I don't agree to the relevance, um, but I haven't tried to tender them yet, Judge. I'm just marking them right now so that everyone can follow. All right. And what is uh, the eventual relevance that you are getting at here? Um, well, I'm going to ask him because one of the things that we have to show in this case is a personal and financial interest. So, and he's talked about how he was reimbursed for these things, and so I have a I have a right to go into the veracity of this statement. All right. <clears throat> um, so let's see, seven, eight, sorry, nine. All right, so right now I'm just going to show you what I've marked um, as these exhibits. May I approach, Judge? You may. I'm just showing you what I marked as seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right. Just so you have them for your reference, because I asked you some questions. All right. So, um, so these are sworn. The, the, I'm first going to ask you about the domestic relations financial affidavit. These are sworn. They're filed under oath, correct? Just now. And the most recent one that you filed was filed on January 26, 2024? Yes, ma'am. So a few weeks ago. Yes, ma'am. And in that one, you said that you made $9,500 each month, correct? Yes, ma'am. You said that in 2022, well, in 2022, in this case alone, isn't it true you were paid $303,000, over $303,000? I was paid? Yes, in this case. Fulton County, by Fulton County. Uh, I see where you're going. So. <laughs> and, and, Judge, I just asked him to answer the question. If he wants to explain it, I've got no problem with right. that. Mr. Wade, just listen to the question asked and, and just ask, answer the question asked. In 2022, isn't it true you were paid over $300,000? No, ma'am, that is not true. You were not paid over $300,000 by Fulton County? No, ma'am, I was not. Okay. How much were you paid in 2022 then? So, what I was beginning to explain was Fulton County wrote a check to my firm. Okay. What happens at that point is the checks are then deposited. As you have the bank statements, you see that. And then they are dispersed between the three of us. So there was Mr. Bradley, there was Mr. Wade, and there was Christopher Campbell. A third, a third, a third. So when you ask me if I was paid $300,000, the answer is no. I got a third of that that went to my personal firm. Now, once the money was distributed to my personal firm, Obviously, the expenses come out of that, and I get, at the end of the day, whatever the profit is. So I did not get $300,000, no ma'am. And let me just clarify. My question was not, did you put in your pocket $300,000? My question was, was the law firm of Nathan Wade paid over $300,000 in the year 2022? Again, <laughs> a third of that came to the law firm of Nathan Wade. So you're saying that... The law firm of Nathan Wade did not receive checks from Fulton County government over $300,000 in the year 2022. That's a different question. Um, a, a third of the 300000 came to Nathan Wade. Okay. 
Again, I'm not asking what went in your pocket. I'm asking, were, was the law firm of Nathan Wade paid over $300,000 in 2022? No, I'm just asking as a witness. I know, but I think okay. we're dancing around the, the point there. So, final time, Ms. Nersh. That's fine. I can move on, Judge. Thank you. Um, so, you said that they were dispersed amongst all of you. Um, or put into an account with all of you. So it's your testimony that for 2022, every check you received from Fulton County government went into an operating account with you, Bradley, and Campbell. No, 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 no. That's not what I testified to. Um, so the, the, the way Bradley and Campbell firm um, es established um, an account mm -hmm. when we decided to purchase a building in 2022, at that point, every piece of income that came into the entity went into that account. Okay. And then after expenses were paid, it was split a third, a third, a third, right? Once that was dissolved, then the funds would go into a different account. Um, my account, one of my accounts. And then I would disperse the funds between now Attorney Campbell and myself, one half and one half. Okay. Makes sense. It, it does. Let me um, let me be more direct then. So the Synovus operating account that you had for Wade Bradley and Campbell. Yes, ma'am. The checks from Fulton County from January of 2022 until June 17, 2022. Those checks were deposited in that operating account. Yes, ma'am. Starting on July 15, 2022, the checks you received from Fulton County up until. May 26, 2022, all went into an escrow account that you had at Fifth Third Bank, correct? No, not all of them. Some not of all them, of them? Some of them, yes. So so it's your testimony that some of your checks from July 15, 2022, up until May 26, 2023, um, some of them went into an account outside of Fifth Third Bank? Your Honor, I'm going to object to the, the relevance of, of the financial transactions. How much money you made is, is highly relevant in this case. It's the personal financial business and where where the money was. And, I mean, it's just to follow up on other things that he's testified to. And why is how much money he made relevant? Because he represented in a, in a it, it's very relevant. He filed an affidavit with the court saying, with another court, he told another judge that he made $9,500 a month. That's what he swore to. And All right, so this this entire inquiry is just to try and is to establish that prior and consistent statement. Yes. All right. Um, I, I'll give you a minute or two more to okay. try that, but we're going to have to move on. Thank you. Um, so I know you're saying that you only got a third of the $300,000, but you were paid over, the firm was paid over $300,000 in 2022, correct? For, Ms. Merchant, it's not what I'm saying. It, 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 they're numbers. They're, they're there. It's, 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 the, it, it's the truth. The, the funds were paid. They were divvied between the three of us, going into an operating account, expenses paid out of it. Okay. At the end of that, the 9,000 figure is what you have. Um, so that's where you got the 9,000 figure from? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And let's see. Let's... Um... <clears throat> Um, prior to when you filed for divorce in November 2021, um, you would use Mr. Bradley's credit card to pay for things with Ms. Willis, correct? I've and then pay him back in cash. I've never used Mr. Bradley's credit card. In my You've life. never used his credit card? Never. For transactions to anything with Ms. Willis, out to dinner, anything like that? I've, Hotels. Never, I've never used Mr. Bradley's credit card. I've never used anyone else's credit card. Not even my father's, and we have the same name. Um, and you'd pay pay back if you ever did use someone's credit card. You'd pay back in cash, though, correct? Ma'am, I've never used someone else's credit card. Um, can you take a look at the bank records that I gave you? That's the largest tab you have. For the record, which exhibit is this? Um, it is exhibit. Hold on, Judge. It's exhibit nine. It should be the largest section 
Before there starts to be yes. questions from that, the exhibits haven't been tendered, and I maintain my uh, relevant objection. All right. Let's see what the next question is, and maybe then the objection is going to be highly relevant. <laughs> Okay. Is that an accurate copy of your Capital One statements that you provided in discovery to um, – is that an accurate reflection of your Capital One records? That I provided in discovery to whom? Um, to your divorce lawyers, or, so, or that you provided in the divorce proceeding. Is the, is the question, does he recognize it by sight? I'm I asking think, if it's his statement. <laughs> Thanks, I, I think that is the question. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's a thick document, but – I, I believe you if you say that that this is this is what my wife's divorce lawyer gave you. I believe it. Your name's on every page of that document, correct? On every page? Pretty much every page. It's not every page. No, it's not on every page. No, ma'am. They're all Capital One bank records. Show they are. Me. Okay. Just take your time. Look through it. Tell me if there's anything that you think is not yours. No, no. They appear to be. Okay. Um, and those bank records show that you paid for travel. With Ms. Willis. Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, I'm, I'm, I'm going to object the relevance of these documents and the. Um, are, well, I think, are you tendering uh, Exhibit 9? I'm going to, Judge, and they're highly relevant to the. They're the well, whole he's asked him a question about what the contents of them, and mm -hmm. they haven't been admitted yet, so why don't we start there? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Those show travel that you and Ms. Willis took. Well, uh, well, so you're asking about the contents of something that hasn't been admitted yet? Right. Well, I'm asking him if that's what it shows because I know that they're going to object on relevance. Well, first we've got to see if it's uh, you've authenticated it, perhaps. And before we get into other details of what's in it, I think I can it needs to be admitted. That's fine. I, I move to admit them. All right. I object on relevance. On relevance. All right. And on that uh, overruled, Ms. Merchant. Thank you. Um, those records demonstrate that you paid for travel with yourself and Ms. Willis, correct? They, sh they should. Okay. And let's just talk about that travel. Okay. Um, the first trip is Belize in March 2023. Is that a trip that you took with Miss Willis? Are you asking? Did you take a trip with Miss Willis in 2023 to, to Belize? Belize? I did. Did you take a trip to California with Miss Willis in 2023? I did. Did you pay for those trips on that credit card? I used the credit card to book the, the travel, but un understand. She that, paid you back cash. Well, let me say this. Let's take the Belize trip, for example, since okay. you started there. That was a birthday gift to me, so I paid nothing for that trip. Zero. Okay. So the, the charges that are on your card, she gave you cash for? She did. Okay. So it, all of the charges. Excuse me, Your Honor, I believe the witness has finished answering the question. Oh, did you have more? I did. Okay. Um, I, I wanted to get into the, the charges on the, the, the car because so traveling with her um, is is a, is a task. You can probably imagine the uh, attention that, that happens. So for safety reasons, um, she would limit her transactions. Um, I mean, imagine trying to walk through an airport or sit at a restaurant or do anything. Um, so th there was no, there's no attempt to con conceal. It's a credit card. Everything is here. So. And, and that's not what I asked. Okay. Um, what I asked was the charges for Belize in March 2023 on that credit card. Those are things you purchased to go with Miss Wa with Miss Willis to Belize. Those are. Those are things that we booked with my card that yes. she paid. Yes. Yes. So those show up on your credit card. They do. And you're saying that she paid you cash to reimburse you for all of that. She did. And she paid you cash for both of your portions or just hers? Both. Okay. So that trip, Belize, just Belize, she paid you for everything on Belize? The entire trip. Okay. So the food, tattoo parlor, all that stuff, she paid for? I'm going to... I'm sorry, maybe there's a question? There was no that there, there was no tattoo parlor in Belize. The charges there's a there's a tattoo parlor on the charges. I, I'm not getting into what it was for. I'm just asking if everything that's on that card related to Belize, she paid you back for. She paid for, yes, ma'am. Okay. 
Um, let's talk about California in May 2023. You all went to California together. Yes. And you booked plane tickets. Yes. And her name was on those plane tickets. They were. And so I know you said that you were worried about security and things like that, but that was in her name. When she traveled, she had to use her name. Oh, so the, the plane tickets? Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you paid for those plane tickets and you paid for a hotel. So, again, the, the, the card, yes. You used your credit card, and I'm not asking about after what happened. I'm asking, did you use your credit card to book your flight and hotel to California? I did. And um, there's a lot of Ubers on there as well for California. Did you pay for those Ubers as well? Yes. Did we were in Napa. And you're saying that Miss Willis, are you saying that Miss Willis paid you back for that? Yes. Did she pay for the entire trip or did she pay for her half of the trip? The, the Napa trip? Mm -hmm. She paid for the excursions. So the, the, it, the expenses sort of balanced out. I mean, there was never, let me be clear, there was never a time when I would say, hey, I bought dinner. Dinner cost $25. You need to give me $25. Okay. If, if you've ever spent any time with Miss Willis, you understand that she's a very independent, proud woman. I'd object. Not so she's going to... I have overall, Mr. White. So she's going to oh. insist that she carries her own weight. And it, it, it actually was a point of contention between the two of us. She is going to pay her own way. So let me re-ask the question to make sure that you answer it. A California trip that you paid for, saying that she did not pay you back for cash. Instead, she paid for excursions, and you believe that was roughly half. No, she gave me some cash, yes. She but what I'm cash. saying is the, the ex everything that we did when we got into Napa, mm -hmm. she paid for. The trip that she booked on her credit card in Miami, did you pay her cash back for your half of that? No. So you never paid no. her back for the tickets she bought for you? No, no. I would say I did pay her back because there were times when I would pay for dinner. Okay. She would pay for dinner. It would balance out. But in a relationship, ma'am, you don't, particularly men, um, we don't go asking back for anything so you're not keeping a ledger of things that you pay for versus the thing that she's paid for um, which is why I said that it, it was a point of contention because she was very emphatic and adamant about this independent strong woman thing so she demanded that she pay her own way um, but she's the district attorney of Fulton County and she has to file financial disclosures disclosing any gifts with anybody that she does business with in Fulton County correct I, I'm, I don't know. Okay. Um, let's talk about Tennessee. You booked a cabin in August 2023 and paid for a cabin in Tennessee. That's when you paid for it. I don't know when the trip was. Can you tell us about that? August of 2023? Mm-hmm. You booked a trip for $1,481.54. Are you, are you asking me, did I take that trip with Miss? Willis, or are well, you asking me? First, I was just asking you to acknowledge that that is correct from the records, that you oh. paid for a cabin in Tennessee. Do you recall, and hopefully you can do it from your memory, do you recall paying for a cabin six months ago, $1,400.81 in Tennessee? Where, 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 where are we now? What okay. page is that? I'm just asking from your memory. Do you remember paying for a cabin in August? Not if the, if asked about a particular transaction. You can, you can answer whether he remembers or not. <coughs> I don't re Mr. Wade, I'm, I'm not asking you to go through a thousand pages of records. I'm asking if you remember paying for a cabin six months ago in Tennessee. No. Do you remember booking a cabin? I booked lots of cabins. Did you go to a cabin with Miss Willis ever? Ever. Ever. No. You 
never gone to a cabin with Miss Willis. No. Um, have you ever gone to Tennessee with Miss Willis? Yes. Okay. When was that? That was around 2022, early 2022. Early 2022? Okay. It was a, it was a, a, a day trip. Um, okay, so you didn't spend we the night. Would, so it was a day trip. Okay. We would drive there, have lunch, drive back. Um, the reason we would do that is because the attention she couldn't get any peace of mind going locally, so we'd get in my car and, and drive to some place off the beat path and have lunch and drive back. Is that when you went to Feigning Goat with her? I think it's in Jasper, Georgia. No, that's that's in Georgia. I don't I don't I don't recall going to Feigning Goat with her. So the Tennessee day trip day trips were not were only Tennessee. Yes. Okay. Did you ever do these day trips in Georgia? Do we drive anywhere in Georgia? Yeah, you were you of were course. talking about day trips yeah, we going out, we, out, and I'm talking about outside of the metro area. Day trips that you were just talking about. These trips you were talking about. The ones that you were. I'm only asking about the ones you were just talking about. Are all of those in Tennessee? No, we drove to Alabama before. Okay. Back. You drove to Alabama. Mm-hmm. Um, did you go anywhere in Georgia? North Georgia? You know, I'm, I'm going to object. Uh, if to direct his attention in some way to a time frame or a location. Then I um, um, you can't it, just be exploring around indefinitely. Is it, is it fair to say that you've taken so many trips with her you don't even really remember all the places you've gone? So many trips? You're having trouble remembering going if you went to North Georgia or not. Were you asking me about specific places? And I, I want to be candid in my responses, so I have to jog my memory because these are places that I have frequented, but not with her. So I want to make certain that if there was ever a time that she accompanied me, that I was candid in that response. Okay. Um. Aruba, October 2022. And I've got um, business records to get for these, Judge. Maybe a little faster. Um, but did you did you take a trip with her to Aruba in 2022? Yes, ma'am. So that Aruba trip um, was so there was a package deal there. We um, my mother had recently retired, and I decided to take my mother on a cruise. Okay. Um, and the second leg after the cruise concluded, um, D.A. Willis and I went to Aruba. So that was all one one trip, if you will. Okay. So my question was, did you go with D.A. Willis to Aruba in 2022? I did. Thank you. <coughs> and you paid for that trip using your business credit card, correct? I did. Okay. And you paid for a cruise as well, correct? That, that's the cruise I was referencing with D.A. Willis, my mother, and myself. Okay. And let, let, cause there's two cruises. So let's just talk about the first one. Okay. So the first one was, um, you took, that's the one with your mother. Yes. And so you introduced D.A. Willis to your mother. That trip, you all took a cruise together, the three of you. Yes. After the cruise was done, you and D.A. Willis flew to Aruba together and your mom flew home. Yes. And you paid for all of this with your credit card, on your business credit card? I did. And are you saying that Ms. Willis paid you cash back for that? She did. And now, now but, but let, let me make this distinction, though. Um, because the, the number that you're looking at reflects the three people on the cruise yeah. ship. There were things that my mother and I did, um, just the two of us, that D.A. Willis didn't, didn't do. And, and, and I'm not attributing that. I did not. My math is not good, but I did not 
include anything with your mother um, on well, those. Can well, I show? Would, you wouldn't be able to see it because it's not separated out. Um, it, it, it just shows a charge on the on the uh, on the account when actually it would have been something with my mother and I. Um, Judge may approach with exhibits ten and eleven. They're both certified business records from one's from I thought 10 was taxes. I'm sorry, 11 and 12. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Thank you. And um, these are business records, Judge. They have the certifications. So I moved to admit them. All right. Uh, defense 11 and 12. Ms. Cross. Based on Ms. Merchant's representation that they are true and accurate as to the certification that was provided to her, um, we have no objection. All right. Again, seeing no other objection, they're admitted. Um, so the trip, just the trip to Aruba alone for you and DA Willis was $3,835.26, correct? Just Aruba. I'm looking for the, um, the amount. This one is 11. Yes, ma'am. $3,835.26. And then the Royal Caribbean for just you and Miss Willis was $1,269.70, correct? No, ma'am. Your mother's got a different line item on there. I'm talking about the cruise, the actual cruise cabin. I think you need to rephrase that as in the form of a question, Ms. Merchant. Did you pay Royal Caribbean for yours and Miss Willis's cabin $1,269.70? Where are we? Which page? We're on the receipts. There's, there's just a few pages of receipts um, on exhibit number 11. Okay. I'm in 11. Can you direct me to where you are on in Exhibit 11? The receipt for Royal Caribbean. So we've got your flights on the one page. I already asked you about the Aruba. And just for the record, I blacked out their um, dates of both. And then Royal Caribbean may be on. Oh, it's small. It's hard to read. Um, it's very hard to read. So let me just let me ask you this right then. Do you recall paying around one thousand two hundred and sixty nine dollars and seventy cents for a Royal Caribbean cruise for you and Miss Wallace? You don't remember that? I, that, that, that? That amount seems kind of small. I, I don't. Okay, so you believe it was higher. Yeah. Okay. Um, while you were in Aruba, then you bought a cruise, a Norwegian cruise, right? And that was the New Year's Eve cruise? While I was in Aruba, no, ma'am. Um, the credit card documents that were ex um, admitted earlier show the purchase date when you were in Aruba, but you don't remember doing that in Aruba? I didn't, I didn't purchase a, a cruise while I was in Aruba. That may be when the cruise company decided to run the invoice, but... I didn't, I didn't purchase a cruise in Aruba, no man. Around the time you went to Aruba, you purchased a cruise for Norwegian for you and Miss Willis to take for New Year's, correct? Before I went to Aruba, yes, ma'am. And that was roughly $3,387, the cruise to Aruba. I mean, the cruise to, I'm sorry, the, cruise, the, um, the Norwegian cruise. So that cruise was with my sisters. Okay. Um, and the, the number that you are seeing would reflect um, my buying dinner for my sisters and their husbands. Or I'm me. just talking about the cruise, the amount that was paid for the cruise ahead of time when you booked the cruise. I'm just talking about that. Okay. That that was a little over $3,000. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, and I understand you, you're saying you paid for other things, but I'm just talking about the cruise amount. Okay. And you paid for a Jeep and you paid for dinner while you were there in Bahamas. Yes, ma'am. Okay. That's the one that Ms. Willis paid for a flight for, correct? That's one of the flights she paid for, yes, ma'am. Actually, a, a documented 
paid for, not cash. I'm talking about a non-cash transaction. That's what she paid for. You, you, you mean the one that I provided the, the receipt for? Yes. Yes, ma'am, that's that. Okay. And um, so she booked that on her credit card and wasn't worried about, I know you said earlier that you were booking everything because she was worried about people knowing where she was traveling. She didn't have any fears booking that one, though, correct? I'm going to object to the phrasing of that question speculated as to what was the motivation of the district attorney. She wants to ask if that was the transaction. They should respond if that was the uh, Ms. Merchant, I think you can rephrase the question, but I'll sustain it on that current phrasing. Um, so she purchased that under her own name, correct? She did. Okay. Um, let's see. So I know we talked a little bit about the seminar where you all met. Um, isn't it true that you would go to Ms. Willis's house in South Fulton County I've, I've occasionally? Never. I've never gone to her house in South Fulton County. You've never gone to her house in South Fulton County? I've never County. seen her house. The first time I even heard the address of that house was when um, one of the individuals in the, uh, the election for our case somehow doxed it and it got out. That was the first time I'd even seen that address. Um, but you would go to the East Point condo, correct? What East Point condo? East Point, Hapeville, something like that. I've, I've never been to East Point with Miss Willis. You've never gone to you've never gone to a condo in either the East Point or Hateful area with Miss Willis. Wait, that's different. I have gone to a condo in Hateville. Okay. So Hateville. Yes, ma'am. So you have gone to a condo with Miss Willis in Hateville. I have. Have you spent the night there? Never. Never spent the night there. Never. Is that the condo that was rented by Robin Yerdy? I believe it was. And um, other members of the DA staff were there as well, correct? Sometimes. I, I've, I've never been around other members of the DA staff at a, a condo in Eggville. There's never been any security for Ms. Willis? Not around me. Um, did you ever ride with Ms. Willis with her security detail to and from the house? No. Um, you served on Ms. Willis's transition team, correct? Yes. And you were part of all of her interviews where she interviewed and re-interviewed employees? I would say n probably 98, 99% of them, yes. Um, is it fair to say you took an active role in these interviews? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Prior to this, you'd never worked at a DA's office, right? Have I ever worked in her DA's office? At no, a DA's office, any DA's office. No, ma'am. Um, have you ever managed a large law firm or a yeah, large? I'm going to object to the relevance of these questions. Ms. Merchant. He served on her transition team, and so I mean, what we're trying to prove is that there's a personal and financial relationship, and that it was improper. Um, and so, you know, whether or not he had experience to serve on this transition team, I think is relevant. Right. I think I already said that we don't need the evidence okay. hearing on that point. Okay. So that's the same. Um, Terrence Bradley also received a contract for Fulton County, correct? Correct. You're asking me about Terrence? I asked if Terrence Bradley also received a contract for Fulton County. I believe that he did. And you were partners with him at that time, correct? I was. So under what you testified to earlier, you would get a third of that contract as well, correct? I would have. And Chris Campbell also had a contract with Fulton County. I believe he did. And so under what you've testified to, you would also get a third of that, correct? I would. Um, they both had contracts for what are called first appearance, which is where they would appear on behalf of the district attorney to do first appearance hearings, correct? I believe they, I believe they did. Okay. And um, they also had what's called a taint contract. Um, they both entered into them January 25th, 2021, correct? Filter, yes, ma'am. Taint or filter? Yes, ma'am. And that was for work in the anti-corruption unit? I don't, I don't know that it was anti-corruption. I, I think that it was uh, civil rights, maybe. Okay. And, and Judge, the, um, the DAs or... Fulton County's come and I guess brought our certificate now, so um, we would move to admit the contracts. I've got those. Um, 
under that certificate. I was planning on doing it under the open records officer, but I believe now they've certified it. I just haven't looked at everything they've certified, though. So. I'm going to ask that the document be um, looked at and confirmed prior to its summary. All right. Ms. Merchant, is there anything else? Uh, what other areas were you planning to cover on this? direct other than these documents? Um, I'm planning on introducing all of the contracts and invoices, but be, I haven't had a chance to look at what Fulton County certified. Um, so I'm planning on introducing those and then um, not much. Can we do the not much? Mm -hmm. We'll do the not much and then we'll get back to the contracts. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay. So this taint, taint contract, um, and, and we're not admitting these right now, but if I represent to you that they say anti-corruption unit, um, can you tell us what a taint attorney for an anti-corruption unit would do? I didn't have a part in those contracts. No. They were your partners at the time, though, correct? Oh, absolutely. Okay. And so you didn't have a part in those contracts, but you got a third of the contract payment. Oh, absolutely. Okay. So the tank contracts that Bradley and Campbell, who are your law partners at the time, had for doing taint review, you got a third of those. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, you signed a confidentiality agreement with the DA's office as well, correct? I did. And I think I'm up to Judge 13. Mm -hmm. Marking that as number 13. Oh. May I approach, Judge? You may. Showing you a copy of what I marked as number 13. Uh, if you could take a look at that and tell me if that is the confidentiality agreement that you signed with the district attorney. It is. Okay. And this basically said you can't talk about anything that happens inside the DA's office, right? No. It doesn't say you can't talk about it? No, no, no. You said it basically says that I can't talk about anything that happens inside the DA's office, and that's not what... Are you tendering this exhibit? Yes, I right? am, yes. Um, we would tender 13. Ms. Cross. I fail to see the relevance. I'd like to the relevance of that but otherwise... Is Mercian relevant to this? Judge, it's relevant to his testimony. If he signed an agreement that says he can't talk about things that happen in the district attorney's office, I think that's relevant to, to this. I also think How? That he, because it's motivation in his testimony. I mean, whether or not he's going to testify to something. He's it's also been certified. I mean, it's part of the record as from what Fulton County gave us. Um, sure, but he hasn't said that that's preventing him from testifying in any way today, is it? No, well, and I can ask him about that. Okay, yeah. Mr. Wade, is this confidential agreement affecting your testimony today? No, sir. Okay. All right. That's fine. Um, let's see. The contracts judge um, and the invoices that I wanted to admit, I wanted to admit all of his invoices and contracts with um, Fulton County. I have them certified. I, I guess I have them certified through Fulton County, so I wasn't sure if I needed to do that. I just wanted to know if the state had an objection to those before. Well, they haven't had, I don't think they've had a chance to look at them. So is that that's the sole remaining uh, exhibit in line of questioning here? Yes. And in terms of the follow-up questions, would it just be for him to say what's reflected in these documents themselves? If they have an objection to the certificates that Fulton County has given, I would admit them through him because he could recognize right, them. But assuming they're admitted, would there actually be anything substantive that he would add other than the documents themselves? No. All right. Okay. So subject to that qualification, do you have any other uh, questions of this witness? Uh, may I just have a moment? Sure. Thank you. Is it possible actually we take a quick break? We're getting there. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And I uh, certainly have the opportunity over lunch to take a look at these documents and work out whatever we could. Um, did you discuss your relationship with Ms. Willis in social settings? Help me understand your question. Did you discuss your relationship with Ms. Willis in social settings? No, I heard the question. I, I, just, I just need to understand what you're asking me. Like, uh, like did what, you what relationship when... Your personal relationship with Ms. Willis. I'm qualified, I'm sorry. Did you discuss your personal relationship, your private personal romantic relationship with Ms. Willis in social settings? No, ma'am. You've never discussed it in social settings? No, ma'am. Um, did you ever discuss it in front of Robin Yurdy in a non-social setting? No, ma'am. Miss Miss Willis is a very, as am I, uh, we're, we're private people. Not our relationship wasn't a secret; it was just private. So, n not at all. I, I wouldn't have discussed my relationship with with Miss Yurdy or anyone else publicly. 
Okay. I actually did have some questions just about the, um, the invoices. If you want to just... These are the documents that you're referring yeah, to? Yeah, they are. It's all of his invoices. And, I mean, and what kind of questions would these be other than the invoices say what they say? It just that, it, yes, that they say what they say. All right. Just talk about questions? them. That's fine. No. All right. Thank you. All right. At this point, uh, we'll take a break. I'll ask uh, the parties to take a look at... What did you, had you marked that as a defense exhibit? Um, I have his contracts and his invoices that I'm about to mark. Um, so before he leaves me, I just want to make sure that the state doesn't have any objection. So those are marked as? They're about to be marked. Um, exhibit 14? 14, 15, 15, 17, and 18. All right, so 14 through 18. So the state take a look at those. I will take a look at those and see if I can uh, match them up with the certified documents that were all right, and then we'll address whether they are tendered for the record when we come back, and from there then we would turn over to the remainder of Defense Council and then the state for any uh, examination as well. So to that end, uh, let's take 45 minutes. We'll be back at 1 o'clock. Mr. Wade, uh, you're still under your oath, and I'd ask you not to speak um, with any other witnesses about your testimony or about any testimony that's already occurred. Yes, sir. All right, we'll be in recess.